This is a red and blue flashing LED soldering kit. They're available from AliExpress for around £1.20. The kits are based on a 555 timer circuit, and I thought it had been an interesting little soldering project for me to assemble today. So let's get started. So inside the kit we have an instruction sheet as normal. Again, something I can't quite read, but important information here around the voltage that will be required to power the kit once we get started. There's also some indications of the various components and we will see those as we go through. We also have a PCB here, this is quite nice. Interestingly, they've um, perforated along here as though you could snap them off, which um, may be an interesting thing to do if you were going to attach some wires. Um, but in our case, we'll leave this fully assembled here and, and hopefully you can see the perforations just here. We have a power lead, no socket for this particular kit. Although we do have our ICs and this should be our 555 timer chip. And there we can hopefully see that's a 555 timer. We do have sockets for the IC there, so that's uh, nice. And we have another IC hiding down here. And if we can liberate the LED from it, we can have a little look at this one. And this is a CD4017. So I don't know if that's going to come across on the camera, but there we go. Uh, we also have a socket for that one as well. We've got some resistors, and these are various values. They've handily left them attached together, so um, we'll double check those with a multimeter if needed, um, but they should be fine. I have a bunch of LEDs in two different colors. We have blue LEDs and red LEDs. We should have 12 of each. I'm not counting right now, but hopefully we will. We have a bunch of additional diodes, and these will likely steer the signal from the um, 4017, if I'm not mistaken, to indicate which side uh, and which pattern the LEDs will flash. We have a capacitor, a couple of transistors. These will be likely to drive the uh, circuit. And these are 8050 transistors, apparently, according to the paperwork we have with this. A little capacitor here. We can have a little look on it to see if we can make out what the rating is. It's a one microfarad at 50 volts. And again, hopefully that can come through. And then we have a ceramic capacitor here as well, which is marked 103. And finally, we have a variable resistor, 104. So uh, that should be a uh, 100k resistor. So as usual, we'll start with the uh, lowest components. In this case, actually, I think they're probably the diodes. because These are very compact diodes here. And apparently, these are iron 4148 diodes. If I look very carefully on here, I can confirm that is indeed what is printed on them. Okay, with the diodes, we just need to make sure that the band matches the black band on the diode. And when we insert them into the board. As usual, I'm using some blue tack. Not really necessary on these diodes here, as they are already pretty firmly into the board. Okay, I'm happy with those. Important to wear eye protection in case you ping them around the room. Okay, let's do our resistors next. So there's 110K and 110K. So these will be my 10Ks, which are brown, black, black, red, with a tolerance band of brown. And here are, are our 100K resistors. Um, 100K, 100 ohm resistors, should I say. Um, and these are brown, black, black, with a tolerance band of brown. Okay, I might put in these sockets next. So make sure that the indentation here matches the indentation here. Okay. 
you'll notice there's one pin here that hasn't been soldered, but there's no pad for it, so that's kind of interesting. I'm going to pop in this electrolytic capacitor next. And so as is seen on the board, we see it's marked here with a plus sign. And the, and the, and the shaded side is the negative, and the capacitor is marked with the negative symbol just here. Ceramic capacitors can go around either way. Then we have our variable resistor. Okay, we also have our transistors, which are going to fit on the edges here. And in this case, they're both the same, but we need to follow the outlines. So you can see this outline should follow the shape marked on the board. So I think those are the pads we would use if we were to break off these side wings here. Uh, so it's good that I've cleared it. So if we break off these side wings, we would end up needing to solder some wires for these pads here. And in this case, uh, for this pad here, over to there as well. So the only components left to put in are the LEDs, other than the chips, of course, which we will put in right at the end and the wire for power, which as we learned was nine to 12 volts DC. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop in all of these LEDs. To do so, we need to make sure we have the flat side of the LED, which is the shorter leg, and it normally has the anvil inside, and we match that to the board. So the flat side goes like so. Now I'm installing all of the red LEDs on the right hand side of the board, but in all of the product shots for this circuit board, you'll notice they're placed on the left hand side. This may well be important later in the video. Okay, so these LEDs here you see are different ways up, so that's a bit tricksy. Let's make sure we get these ones right. Okay, so we're all done except for the chips. Just need to straighten the legs a little. Okay, so this is our 555. And this is our CD4017. There we go. Black, we have red. So I've turned that on, and that is at six volts. So let's turn it up to seven, and we saw the blue flash a little bit. Let's turn it up to nine. So still not getting anything there. So let's try adjusting our resistor, which just adjusts the speed actually. So it looks like we might have some issue. We have some, some illumination going on there, but it's very faint. So we can try it on full on 12 volts and, oh, there we go. So on 12 volts, it's absolutely fine. So blue LEDs have a higher forward voltage or voltage drop than red LEDs. This circuit was carefully designed to accommodate this by having just three LEDs in each series circuit on the right of the board for L1 to L12, and four LEDs in each series circuit on the left of the board for L13 to L24. Unfortunately, I didn't notice this on the diagram and put the colours on the opposite sides. This means my board requires the full 12 volts to overcome the higher required forward voltage of each series circuit of four blue LEDs. Certainly something to watch out for in future builds. And you'll see it does a, a sequence of flashes on each side. One, two, three, one, two, three, and so forth, back and forward. So that's, so I think that's as slow as it goes. And we can make it go considerably faster. So I'm 
going to turn that back down again. I think I might get the more, more sedate speed. So there we go. But anyway, I think this was a nice little project and I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.